Hi, this is Jed Wonderly with the Utah Sports Report, and we've got some great things to talk about today, namely the upcoming game on Saturday uh, between, of course, our beloved Utes, at least my beloved Utes. You may not be a Utah fan, but why in the heck are you watching this? I appreciate it, but this is a Utah channel. So, hey, at any rate, feel free to watch and enjoy hope and uh, comment and all that kind of stuff. Like, subscribe, you name it. But against U Utah against Arizona State this week. That's, uh, that's the main topic of discussion. And then secondarily, we'll, have, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the other games in the Pac-12. And there's a few in interesting matchups, including uh, what my daughter and her husband on their podcast, Joe vs. Joe, called the terrible game of the week, which is Arizona against Colorado at Colorado. So we'll talk about all of that after this. All righty, we're back. What did you think of that, huh? That's kind of cool. I'm digging it. Uh, my son put that together for me, and I appreciate him very much for doing that. That's, uh, that music was a piece of music that I wrote and recorded several years ago. thought it was somewhat appropriate. I might uh, have to write something specifically for it, but for now it'll do, and uh, kind of digging the, the highlights and everything. Uh, at any rate, um, on to this week's episode. I'm going to try to keep it a little shorter for you guys this week, uh, or at least this time. You know, on uh, Sunday's episode got a little long because of, uh, you know, it was a, a kind of a different format. But anyway, here we go. So, Utah ASU. Right now, the line is even. The line started off, I believe, at uh, with Arizona uh, favored by two, kind of shifted down to one, I believe, fairly quickly, and now it's even, which means on a neutral field, uh, Arizona State would actually be favored by uh, three points because they say that uh, three points is what you get for the home field advantage. So, uh, got a couple of things that uh, that's going to be interesting about this game. First of all, Arizona State's defense is playing really well. Very opportunistic. They create a lot of turnovers, and they do things with those turnovers. I don't know if you saw that play against Stanford last week, but the one guy got an interception, and he lateraled it to, uh, to another DB coming by on the outside, and the guy took it in for a touchdown. Um, so, that's, uh, so seven of their 28 points last week was scored by the defense. So Stanford held them to 21 points. Now... I don't know how good Stanford's defense is, but uh, I don't think that Arizona State has a real kind of high-flying offense, if you will. I don't think they'll get the kind of yards, especially through the air, that, uh, that USC was able to get against us. And, of course, some of that with USC came toward the end of the game where we, we, you know, we had it sewn up and we probably weren't playing as hard as we should have been because we didn't need to, to be honest with you. So, um, the one thing I will worry about is uh, edge contain. I mean, we haven't had great edge contain for a few years, it seems like. And I'm trying to remember the last time we had uh, good edge containment from our DNs. But, uh, you know, we've got a couple of young defensive ends uh, with Carlton and Fillinger, and they both been making some plays. They also, you know, make freshman mistakes, and that's kind of to be expected. But with Jaden Daniels, he's got like 369 yards rushing so far this season and a pretty good yards per carry average. So it's going to be very important to not have the failures and shortfalls that we did against BYU and Jaron Hall, where he was able to get outside and pick up some decent yardage. We really need to contain that edge. And it'll be interesting to see if maybe uh, Utah goes with a spy to kind of keep uh, Daniels in check. Uh, the other thing is, is 
they have a very good running back. In fact, I think they have two pretty good running backs. So it'll be interesting to see what their offensive line's like, if our defensive line is going to be able to, one, get pressure on, like we did against USC, without too many blitzes, although we also had some really good blitzes against USC. And if we can get some TFLs and try to and force them into passing downs, try to keep their yards per carry number low, and and hold them to situations where we get a lot of third and longs. That's where we're going to have success, especially if the if they're you know third and longer than seven. We can kind of pin our ears back, send in a blitzer or two, and put enough pressure on Daniels, and while not letting him get outside of the pocket and around the edge. So if we can do that, I think we've got a good chance of holding their offense in check. The uh, <clears throat> Then the question becomes, with their defense being what it is, they have a linebacker who is uh, on kind of the All-American watch list and has somewhat similar stats to, uh, to uh, Devin Lloyd. I don't think he's got nearly as many tackles. He has 39 tackles. I think Lloyd is up in the 50s, uh, but has two interceptions, a couple of tackles for losses and things like that. I think Devin Lloyd's stats are definitely better. But uh, this guy sounds pretty good, and if he's on the All-American watch list, then you know we're going to have possibly our hands full with him, and just their defense in general. So it will be interesting to see if our offensive line takes maybe another step forward this week. I hope they do, both for our running game and for our pass game. I loved everything about what what uh, Cam Rising did in the game last week. And I really hope that he can continue to play like that and integrate the receivers a little bit more. You know, hopefully, you know, Vele will get open downfield you know, for big chunks, I hope, along with uh, some of the others. Theo Howard had a great catch. It was, I think, 30-ish plus yards, give or take. And... Uh, we need to see some more plays like that where we can stretch the field because that'll, with threats like that, that will certainly open up the running game a little bit more. It'll kind of soften up the second level and certainly soften up that, that third level with the corners and the safeties. So if we can do that and then, of course, have Cam Rising being a running threat, get some good blocking from, from our running backs, the, uh, I mentioned in my earlier video this week, I mentioned that uh, Tavion Thomas had a pancake block. I mean, it was a great block. And that was on the play right before his big touchdown run. And it'll be interesting to see, uh, one, we need to have ball security. We need to not turn the ball over against the opportunistic defense of Arizona State, especially, uh, well, for every reason that you would you know, assume in the first place. We, you know, one, it takes away a scoring opportunity from us. Two, if we give it to them on our side of the field, it gives them an easy scoring opportunity. And uh, three, it's just, you know, because of those things, it, it really uh, puts us at a disadvantage if we don't win the turnover battle. Uh, ultimately, the goal would be perfection and no turnovers. But if we have turnovers, hopefully we create at least as many turnovers by them, if not one or more than what we have so that we can win that turnover battle. We've got to do that. And uh, our offensive line has to show up. Our defensive line needs to get pressure and contain the edge. And I think that as long as we do that and our young cornerbacks and safeties continue to grow and perform, Vontae Davis, not you know young, he's a, a senior, he had a great game last week. And hopefully uh, our, our guys who have been kind of nicked up can get uh, be 100% healthy this week. We can get a little bit more out of McKinney and maybe Cole Bishop can be back. Uh, that would be a good thing. Loved what, uh, what uh, Latu did, freshman. Great, great game last week, freshman defensive player of the week. So if those things can happen, and of course we need uh, our special teams to you know not give up any you know, touchdown returns. We need to get, you know, good coverage on both the kick and punt returns. And then we also, man, if Covey can get, uh, you know, a couple of good returns, didn't have 
much of an opportunity against USC for any returns. And then we've got to make our field goals and extra points. But preferably, if we're in the red zone, we've got to convert to touchdowns. So that's obvious. I mean, unfortunately, I'm not saying anything that, uh, that uh, isn't probably already well known. But hopefully I am pointing out a few things. If you weren't familiar with, uh, with ASU, uh, you got to be watching out. And I'm getting a little antsy, so sorry if the camera's jiggling a little bit here. But um, hopefully, hopefully the uh, if you weren't familiar with Jaden Daniels and what he's been doing this year, he's not the same Jaden Daniels uh, as he was when we just totally shut him down in 2019. He was four for 18 with 25 passing yards and an interception, and he, I think he had negative rushing yards because we were always tackling him in the backfield. But uh, this year's a little different. Our defensive line isn't quite as dominant. He's, you know, more mature, older, experienced. And uh, so we're going to have our hands full. And I'll be happy with any win. But uh, obviously, the more dominant, the better. And we'll see what happens. So uh, it'll be a great game, I hope. I'm going to be there. And uh, here's, to, uh, here's to being 3-0. and now, as far as everything else that's going on in the Pac-12, it's uh, let's take a look and see, uh, so I don't have to do this all from memory, the, uh, the one game that I absolutely have down on memory is Colorado versus Arizona. Who do you think's going to win? I want to know. Comment in the, uh, in the comment section, which makes sense, below. I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is Arizona's first win. They have a much better offense than Colorado has shown to have. Colorado does have a fairly decent defense. At least it looked good against Texas A&M. Didn't look all that great against uh, Minnesota. So maybe Texas A&M's offense isn't that great. However, they just scored 41 points against Alabama. So there is that. Uh, oh, a tangled web we, we weave, don't we? in college football. Now, Stanford is at Washington State. Washington State just beat a good Oregon State team. Wow. I'm, I've got to pick, uh, I've got to pick Washington State, although I don't know that Stanford has lost two games in a row this year, in which, and since they lost against uh, Arizona State at Arizona State last, last week, maybe it's uh, Stanford's turn to win. But uh, since it's at Washington State and Washington State has a little momentum having just beaten Oregon State, I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Washington State even though Stanford is favored by one and a half. And I'm going to say um, that I could, I will probably be wrong on that. I probably just guaranteed Stanford a win. And uh, California at Oregon. California has proved to be slightly above dismal. Oregon, I don't know if his, uh, I don't know if his, if their quarterback is fully, uh, I think his name is Brown. I don't know if he's fully healthy. Uh, I think that's probably why they lost uh, their last game against Stanford is probably because he was dinged up. I know he got dinged up in the game prior to the Stanford game. So, but they are coming off a bye. And so their players should be a little bit kind of recovered and repaired. Uh, but Oregon at Oregon is definitely going to take out California, and I think they're going to cover the spread. Spread's 13 and a half. Uh, beyond that, we've got, uh, by the way, Colorado's favored by five and a half right now uh, at home against Arizona. Picking Arizona. And our other game of the week is UCLA at Washington. Washington is two and three, right? Two and three. And Washington is somehow favored by one and a half over a UCLA team who's four and two and has done very well with the, you know, a close loss against Fresno State, but Fresno's looking pretty good. They have a very good offense and, you know, they were close with, uh, they only lost by a touchdown to Oregon in the first game of the season. And uh, UCLA was dominant against LSU, which is very average and pedestrian this, this year. So I'm, but I don't see him losing to Washington. Uh, not going to happen. I think uh, UCLA is going to going to come and uh, kind of continue their 
they had a good win last week against Arizona, and I think they're going to come out and continue that uh, momentum and beat Washington probably by, I'm going to say, 10 points, maybe more. So that's my picks. Uh, I kept it down to about, uh, what's that, 13 minutes? Tried to do it quicker, but didn't. Sorry. Anyway, uh, please like, please subscribe, please feel free to share, share this, and I want to see more comments. Please feel free to leave your comments and uh, let me know your thoughts on uh, both the Utah-Arizona State game as well as uh, any of the other Pac-12 games or any of the top 25 games. There's a couple of pretty decent top 25 games as well. So let me know what your thoughts are, and I'll look forward to talking to you next week. Make it a great one. Take care. Bye-bye.